What's going on everyone? My name is Jason Vinson and I am a wedding and documentary photographer based out of Northwest Arkansas. And today we're going to be talking about part two of a three part series where I walk through a set of images from a bridal session and explain everything that went into making them. The three parts are going to be bride prep portraits and the last is going to be taking a look at a creative after dark portrait. So let's jump into it. So to start things off when it comes to portrait time of the day, whether that be during the actual wedding or during a bridal session such as this, I prefer to go into the day not knowing exactly what the plan is. In the past, when I had location scout, something would always go wrong or change, causing me to either give up on an idea that I was really excited about, or I'd end up trying to make an image work that just was no longer possible or just not as good as when I initially scouted the location. So now I simply try to have an idea of where we're going to start and then I just allow myself to be inspired by the current light and compositions that I see. It's also worth mentioning that while I'm always taking images during the session and trying things out, not all the images I take are ones that I really love. Sometimes I'll take simple images I can do in my sleep just in order to give myself time to think through what I really wanna do next. And while I'll still deliver these images in this video, I really only wanna talk about the best images, the ones I'd share on social media, add to my website, maybe record a YouTube video about, uh, things like that. Lastly, let's talk about the gear. For this session, I'll be shooting on the Sony A9 paired with either the 24mm f1.4 G Master lens, the Sony 35mm f1.4 CZ lens, the Sony 85mm f1.8 lens, or the Sony 70-200 f2.8 G Master Mark II lens. For lighting, I'm using the Stella Pro Reflex S mounted on top of a C8 auto stand from Cheetah Stand. While this light can do a digital burst similar to a traditional flash, for this part of the day, I'll be using it primarily in constant mode. I really love the see what you get ability of constant light and it saves a bit of setup time since I don't need to take any test images just to fine tune my placement or my power. So with that, let's jump into the session. The first location we are photographing in is the lower level of a parking garage. I'd never actually been inside this garage before, but I drive by it all the time and I've noticed that it's usually empty uh, and then the setting sun shines squarely on the side of this garage. So when we first arrived, I was not disappointed in what I had to work with. And while I had my Reflex S at the ready, I'm a big believer in if the light is amazing, then there's no need to overcomplicate things with extra light. So working off this amazing light pattern on the ground, I wanted to backlight the bride and frame her within the dark space below the window. The problem is that even with the camera high above my head, I couldn't get her fully within that space. So parking garage trash can to the rescue. I just moved the trash can over to the area that I wanted to be shooting and I carefully tried not to cause myself, you know, extreme bodily injury and I was able to get the camera high enough for what I was after. From here, I saw the areas of the garage window had some circular holes cut into them um, and this is what's kind of letting some of the light through. So I knew if I got the bride nice and close, you'd be able to see those circular patterns like projected onto her face. Now with her face lit by the sun, the shadow side of the image sort of falls off into darkness. So here I brought in my Stella Pro Reflex S to use as a rim light. This helps separate her from the background more, but the key with this light placement is to get the light up high enough. If the light was lower, you'd miss out on that lighting detail that's on the bride's collarbone as well as her neckline. Now, before we left for the next location, I wanted to use this amazing light on the floor one more time and I wanted to try and show the entire section of light, but I needed to be up higher than even the trash can could get me. So I found an area on another wall where I could stand up on a high ledge. This extra height, along with blindly shooting with the camera up as high up over my head as I could reach, I was able to get the full section of light and kind of get the image that I had in mind. Now, as for the next location, as I was pulling up to the getting ready area, I noticed a really cool cherry blossom tree in the parking lot. What I noticed was that the tree was slightly elevated from the parking lot. So if I got down low enough, I knew I could get a composition where it was just sky and tree and then possibly the bride. So we arrived back at the parking lot just at sunset and I simply placed the bride right next to the tree, shot from a low angle and exposed the image so that the tree and her would be a silhouette. And I had enough time to play with the composition a bit. So I placed the sun directly behind her and then I placed the sun just directly out of frame. And I know which one I like better, but I'd be curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Next up, I really wanted to show off these cherry blossoms. So I planned to have the bride down low while I took an image through the tree. And while I was getting things set up, the light was 
perfect. It was just at that right angle. The sun was hitting the tree, cutting over the hill, and then lighting up the bride's face. The problem is, is that by the time I got everything set up, the sun dipped below the horizon and I lost all of my life. So Della Pro Reflex S2, the rescue. But this time I needed two of them. One, I have on a C8 cheetah stand with the spot optic. This allows me to get just a little patch of light on the bride's face, and then the rest falls off into shadows from there. For the second light, I used this one with no modifier attached at all, so I just used the bare LED. This gives me maximum spread of the light, as well as making the light more specular on the cherry blossom. So while taking images with my camera in one hand, I moved the reflex all around until I found just the right place that I could light up as many cherry blossoms as possible. This is a perfect example of where constant light is really ideal. Had I needed to do this with flash, it would have taken me a ton of work and a ton of test images to really get that light placed perfectly, especially with holding the light in my hand. But with the LED, I can just move it around and visually see when things line up. From here, I was ready to move inside for a creative low light image I had in mind, but I noticed a sign that had been blown down by a storm that we had the night before. I thought it would make for an interesting way to frame the bride, so I posed the bride within that frame and I lit her with a Stella Pro Reflex S. And for this image, I'm still using the spot lens so that it just gives her that kiss of light across her face. I then got down super low so that all you could see is the broken sign and the bride. Okay, so that's it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so that you don't miss future videos. If you missed part one where I walk through the getting ready part of this day, make sure to check that out. And then keep an eye out for part three where I walk through how I took this low light creative portrait. Lastly, I'd love for you to follow me over on Instagram. There's a link to that in the description below. I'll catch you on the next one.